Hello friends and fellow bibliophiles, welcome back to Cat's Novel Adventures. In today's video, I am sharing my TBR for Folklore February, and I'm also going to share a few recommendations. <laughs> Folklore February is all about reading fairy tales, folk tales, tall tales, fables, legends, and myths throughout the month of February. As I mentioned in my announcement video, this is a flexible reading event. Even though we have four one-word prompts and a bonus prompt, you don't have to follow them. You could just read one story in the folklore realm and you have participated. Don't get bogged down with rules or prompts. It's all about having fun. And there's so much to choose from. You can read fiction, nonfiction, picture books, middle grade, YA, comic books, graphic novels, poetry, short stories, and you can even cross over into the fantasy and horror realm as long as they have some kind of folklore elements. I'm going to share my TBR with you first and then I will share some recommendations with you. So the four one-word prompts are mirth, magic, mystery, and monster. And I tried to choose some books that will fit in those categories. Keep in mind, some of the books that I've chosen could fit more than one prompt. And also remember that for fairy tales, you can read fractured fairy tales as well as retellings. In fact, I even encourage it because fractured fairy tales and retellings can be so much fun. For the prompt of mirth, I chose a couple of picture books, and the first one is a fractured fairy tale. It is called The Frog Prince Continued, story by John Shushka and paintings by Steve Johnson. This one could also work for the prompt of magic as well. And it says, after the frog turns into a prince, he and the princess do not live happily ever after, and the prince decides to look for a witch to help him remedy the situation. So this is going to be a lot of fun. And I actually am reading from my Grim Fairy Tale collection. Um, I am reading the fairy tale, The Frog King, or Iron Henry, which the Frog Prince continued would be related to that. And then the next one is called Tortuga in Trouble by Ann Wickford Paul, illustrated by Ethan Long. Look how great this one is. I just recently picked this one up. And this one is actually a fairy tale retelling for the fairy tale Little Red Riding Hood. It says, when Totuga arrives at Abuela's house to bring her supper, Abuela looks suspiciously like Coyote. And what's great about this, it has a Spanish dictionary. So that looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun, musing. And then of course, I'm also adding my gnomes book that I received from Andrew and Megan because I think these little guys are very amusing and I can't wait to learn a little bit about them. I'm gonna start it in February. There's no way I'm gonna be able to finish this by the end of Folklore February. So I think what I'm gonna do is start it and then read it all year long. And the last book for this prompt is Once Upon a More Enlightened Time by James Finn Garner. It's more politically correct bedtime stories. These are little fairy tales. And it says, in Once Upon a More Enlightened Time, Garner tackles many demeaning, culturally biased viewpoints through his retelling of well-known tales such as The Princess and the Pea, The Tortoise and the Hare, and The City Mouse and The Suburban Mouse. If this book fulfills its purpose, no longer will ants, grasshoppers, pusses in boots, and other citizens of nature bear the burden of our insecurities. No longer will mer people suffer because of their unique 
evolutionary niche and no longer will capable young women sleep their lives away waiting for princes to rescue them. So this one sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I read the first one last year for Folklore February and really, really enjoyed it. For the prompt of magic, I have two books chosen, and the first one is called The Grim Legacy by Polly Shulman. It's a middle grade book. And this one could also be used for the prompt of mystery as well. It says, what if fairy tale magic really existed? Elizabeth has just started working as a page at the New York Circulating Material Repository, a London library of objects, contemporary and historical, common and obscure. In secret, too, for in the repository's basement lies the Grimm Collection, a room of magical items straight from the Grimm Brothers' fairy tales. But the magic mirrors and seven league boots and other items are starting to disappear, and before she knows it, she and her fellow pages, Handsome Mark, Perfect Anjali, and Brooding Aaron, are suddenly caught up in an exciting but dangerous adventure. This sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. And the next one comes from Norse Mythology, and it is Odd and the Frost Giants, written by Neil Gaiman and illustrated by Chris Riddell. Very excited to get to this one. This has been on my shelf for quite a while. And keep in mind, this is Norse Mythology. Don't feel like you're limited to just Greek or Roman. There's all kinds of mythology. It's world mythology. Think Egyptian, Chinese, Japanese. So many possibilities out there. So your sky's the limit when it comes to mythology. But this story takes place in a village in ancient Norway. There lives a boy named Odd, and he's had some bad luck. His father perished in a Viking expedition. A tree fell and shattered his leg, and the endless freezing winter is making villagers dangerously grumpy. Now Odd is forced on a stranger journey than he had imagined, a journey to save Asgard, city of the gods, from the frost giants who have invaded it. So this is going to count as magic, but it could also count for the prompt of monsters because frost giants are monsters. For the prompt of mystery, I am planning to read Devolution by Max Brooks. This could also count for monster because it's about Bigfoot. And this is part survival narrative, part bloody horror tale, part scientific journey into the boundaries between truth and fiction. It is a Bigfoot story, and it is told through a series of journal entries. I am also going to be reading a fairy tale from the Brothers Grimm fairy tale collection, and it is called The Riddle. I don't know anything about it, so I'm looking forward to finding out all the deets on that story. For the prompt of Monster, I am going to be reading Gallo and the Lion by Eric Ayono and illustrated by Laurent Carvassier. This is another picture book that I recently picked up. It is beautifully illustrated, and this is actually a folk tale from Cameroon. Gallo goes to an old soothsayer for help when Paul Gazom, the lion, devours his sister. So in this folk tale, I'm thinking that the lion is acting kind of like a monster if he's going to go and eat his sister. And for my second book, I am reading Mythical Monsters, the Scariest Creatures from Legends, Books, and Movies. Now, this will be a book that I will choose some monsters to read about. I'm not going to be able to read this whole entire collection throughout the month of February. But think about legends. Legends are also mysterious. So this could fall possibly in the category of mystery as well. And then last but not least, I am reading Grim Memorials by R. Patrick Gates. This is a horror novel with fairy tale elements, and it has to do with a human monster, a woman who is cunning and tries to lure children to her home for nefarious reasons using fairy tales. 
One other thing I want to mention about Grimm Memorials is this is Kelsey's book club pick for February for her Midnight Book Society book club. And I am going to be a special guest on her live chat to discuss this book along with the author Nathaniel Toll, who is the author of Pumpkin Cinema. And the neat thing about it is R. Patrick Gates was Nathaniel's creative writing teacher. So that should be a fun chat and I'm looking forward to reading the story. Now it's time for some recommendations. All of the books that I'm recommending to you today are books that I have read either recently or at some point in my reading life. I tried to get a variety between children's literature, adult fiction, as well as a little nonfiction. So you can see some picture books in middle grade, YA. Some of them are retellings and also some of them are fractured. So I'm also gonna go through the prompts and give you some suggestions of how you can interpret them, but really it's how you interpret them that really matters. So for mirth, we can think of it as amusement, merriment, or laughter. And there's two fractured fairy tales I wanna to recommend to you. I don't own the copies, but the first one is one I just read last year, and it's The True Story of the Three Little Pigs by John Sheshka and illustrated by Lane Smith. And then there's also The Stinky Cheese Man and Other Fairly Stupid Tales by John Sheshka and illustrated by Lane Smith. Both of those are wonderful fractured fairy tales and I really would love to get my hands on copies of both of them for my personal library. And then I would recommend The Mitten, which is based on a Ukrainian folk tale. This is a very sweet story very wonderful with all the little animals that try to get inside of a mitten. And then I have a fable called The Hare and the Tortoise. This is by uh, La Fontaine. It's based on a fable by La Fontaine, illustrated by Brian Wildsmith. I read this one last year as well. Everybody thinks about Aesop's fables, but La Fontaine is also one that has some pretty good fables as well. And then the first of the collection, Politically Correct Bedtime Stories, Modern Tales for Our Life and Times by James Finn Garner. This one is the first. I'm reading the second this time around. These are funny. And then I have The Adventures from the Land of Stories. That's a series of middle grade books that have to do with fairy tales. And this is The Mother Goose Diaries. This is by Chris Colfer. So really neat, you meet all kinds of fairy tale characters in this story. And then the last one is a retelling of The Little Mermaid. It is part of a series by Melanie Sellier. It's called A Princess of Wind and Wave. I read this during the summer for the Cozy Cottage Book Club. Even though it is the sixth book in the series, you can read them out of order. There are some references towards the end of the book, but it still didn't take away from the enjoyment. So these are some choices for mirth. The second prompt is magic. So some meanings for this could be delight, excitement, or supernatural. And just like my TBR, many of the books that I've chosen can work for multiple prompts. Well, the same goes for these recommendations. So you could use The Princess of Wind and Wave by Melanie Sellier for this prompt as well, because it is a fairy tale retelling Guess what? Fairy tales have magic in it. Another suggestion is a picture book. This is The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen, illustrated by Backroom Batulin. And I read a different version of The Snow Queen last year for Folklore February. This one I happened to pick up after Folklore February. So there are many different versions, but if you can find a picture book of the Snow Queen, they're generally very, very pretty. And then you might wanna check out some middle grade series. The first one I would suggest is Percy Jackson and Olympians. It's a series of several books, and the first one is called The Lightning Thief. This is by Rick Reardon, and this is gonna to have to do with Greek mythology. 
And then if you want to go into some Egyptian mythology, you could do the Cain Chronicles. And the first in that series by Rick Reardon is the Red Pyramid. And then we can talk some books that are fantasy with fairy tale elements to them. Because keep in mind, fantasy or some books that are written by authors of today they are not really considered folklore because folklore, remember, is oral. It was passed down generationally, orally storytelling. But if you find some fantasy books or some horror books that have those fairy tale folklore elements, obviously you can count them for Folklore February because last year I did. And one book that I absolutely love, it was one of my favorites from 2023, was Stardust by Neil Gaiman. This is an adult fairy tale, and it is absolutely wonderful. And then I read a middle grade retelling of Snow White and Rose Red. This one is called Snow and Rose by Emily Winfield Martin. Beautiful illustrations. I adored this book. And then I just recently, for Winter Ween, read this book. It's called Slewfoot, A Tale of Bewitchery by Brom. This is what I would consider steeped in folklore and would highly recommend it to anybody who likes that genre. And then the last one I would recommend is Fairy Tale by Stephen King. This is a dark fantasy with fairy tale elements in it. The third prompt is mystery. So there are, are several meanings for this. You could consider solving a puzzle or a riddle. It could be secrecy or it could be a rite or a ritual, perhaps a revelation of some kind. Or it could actually be a mystery novel that has some folklore or fairy tale elements to it. And a good place to start with mysteries are legends, especially like urban legends. And one book that I would recommend is Weird USA, Your Travel Guide to America's Local Legends and Best Kept Secrets by Mark Moran and Mark Sherman. This book includes legends like the Mothman or the Blair Witch. So, so many different little legends in here that I find fascinating. You could also consider a picture book that has to do with a revelation of some kind that has to do with, you know, the mystery, Christian mystery, I guess, and that's the tale of the three trees. This is a traditional folk tale. Remember, folk tales can be historical tales. They can be ghost tales. They can also be adventure tales. And then some of these can also work for monsters. For example, Nothing But Black and Teeth by Cassandra Kaw. This is Japanese mythology, but it also could con be considered monsters because there are some demons mentioned in here. Folklore can also be included in folk horror, so I would recommend Thomas Tryon's Harvest Home. And then Wilding Hall by Elizabeth Hand. Another legend that is pretty popular is by Washington Irving, and that is The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. You might want to also consider some short stories, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. And this is a compilation of three of the books. This is by Alvin Schwartz, and this could also count for Monster as well. And then finally, you have to think about some monsters that are steeped in folklore. They always have some kind of a legend or myth. And one of them that is pretty popular is the vampire. And this one is based on that kind of folklore. And it is The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. This one is actually about a woman who is on a quest for the truth about Vlad the Impaler, the medieval ruler whose barbarous reign formed the basis of the legend of Dracula. So when you're thinking of 
Also, Dracula, think about werewolves, the chupacabra. So a lot of times monsters also can cross over into mystery. The fourth prompt is monster. And this one is awesome because it covers all of the genres under the folklore umbrella. You will find monsters in fairy tales, folk tales, tall tales, legends, myths, as well as fables. You will find a plethora of them if you Google them. I mean, just think about all the monsters out there. Chupacabra, you've got werewolves, you have vampires, the Loch Ness Monster, even ogres, dragons. I mean, there are monsters all over the world and they are land, sea, and sky. And the great thing about monsters is you can find them in dark fantasy, in science fiction, as well as horror. And when you think about monsters, you can interpret it quite a few ways. There are monsters that are, are actual creatures or it could be a threatening force like nature. It could also be a huge success that becomes a monster and takes over your life. Or it could actually be an immoral human like the woman in Grim Memorials. So this is probably my favorite prompt because it probably is the prompt or the category that I have many, many books in. So I am only showing you a handful of them. And the first one I want to show you is a picture book. It's one that I recently reread, and it's called The Night of the Gargoyles. It is by Eve Bunting and illustrated by David Wisner. Fantastic, beautifully illustrated book. Another book is Grendel by John Gardner. This is the monster that appeared in the epic poem Beowulf. Then we also have our famous one that I mentioned in the mystery prompt, and that is Vampire. And we can't go wrong with Bram Stoker's Dracula. You could also go for a popular vampire that got turned into a series called the Southern Vampire Series, also known as True Blood. And this is a book that has several stories in it. This follows Suki Stackhouse. Uh, who lives in Louisiana. And the first book in the series is called Dead Until Dark. And if you want to go the YA route, you could always pick up Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. This one has not only vampires, but also werewolves. And then we could even consider Frankenstein by Mary Shelley as part of this category because... It is the modern Prometheus, and Prometheus is part of mythology. And last but not least, I can't, you know, finish out this prompt without mentioning one of my favorite monsters, and that is Krampus. And this is a nonfiction book. It's called The Krampus and the Old Dark Christmas, Roots and Rebirth of the Folkloric Devil. This is by Al Ridnor. Fantastic book. So as you can see, there are so many possibilities with Monster. So have fun. Enjoy picking books out for your TBR for Folklore February. I can't wait to see what you're going to read throughout the month of February. Now, the one genre that I don't have many recommendations for is Tall Tales. And I will tell you that I really don't no many tall tales except for possibly Johnny Appleseed, Picos Bill, Paul Bunyan, John Henry. And the only one that I have read was one many years ago when Andrew dressed up as Picos Bill for a Bequest class. And I do not have that copy of the book handy. But I would recommend reading some tall tales for mirth or perhaps for mystery because a lot of them are legends. You know, they were based on real people that lived and they just have a little bit of exaggeration added to it. But I also want to mention to you that there is a bonus prompt and the bonus prompt is simply to watch a screen adaptation of your favorite folk tale, fairy tale, tall tale, legend, fable, or myth. 
And I have not chosen what I am going to watch for this prompt, but I am going to watch something. So remember, we do have a Discord, and in that Discord, I will be posting what I am reading and watching. I am so excited about Folklore February. I cannot wait to start reading the books that I have pulled for this readathon. I hope that you are considering participating in Folklore February. And if so, let me know what you're reading and watching in the comments below. And keep in mind, we will be kicking off Folklore February with sprints on February 1st, which is a Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Central Time. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. Thanks so much for watching. And until our paths cross again, stay amazing and be adventurous. Thank you.